Without further ado, it is my profound pleasure, I am humbled and honored and privileged to announce to you Sean Penn. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Um, and um, thank you and welcome to the new District 2. Um, what an extraordinary place in this country you and District 2 have. The legacy of local, national, and international influence for the equality of rights, for the, the ability to have a better life and a better environment, for the courage to take on Wall Street and corporate environmental interests, for the legacy that is uh, Congressman Lynn Woolsey, Congresswoman Lynn Woolsey. And it's, and it's a very particular legacy, and, and, and it reminds me a bit of uh, the Roadrunner cartoons. Because it's really, I believe, upon you, and, and, um, and um, a great opportunity to, to, to be the wily e. Coyote smart. In other words, there was a lot of times that the wily of the other side got through. And fortunately, you had a type of, of leadership, of representation here, that just had the stick to of principle and didn't just bend with the trend or back off from what was all of our loss when, when, when things didn't go the way of the people. So, the idea was always good. And when the Roadrunner came through and the plunger was ready with the TNT below, um, sometimes went off. Do it again. Make the, the legacy and the mission of your voice complete. And how, how to do that? I think it takes a very, very, very clear mind. And it takes the stick to of that principle in the voter. Now, uh, Norman Solomon I have known for many years. Um, I'll tell you one very quick, well, two very quick things about Norman. <clears throat> when we went to Iran uh, during the election period that led to uh, the presidency of uh, Ahmad Ahmadinejad, there was a word on the street that women were going to stand up for their rights. And this was not a, a, a Tehran, Iran is not um, known for its tolerance. And so Norman suggested that we might go and, and stand in solidarity. And indeed, we were both there as journalists uh, with the women who were calling for their own voice. And um, as hundreds, then thousands gathered around the circle of singing women, suddenly it was the appearance of the special police and the basij. And then out came the batons. As things got chaotic, I briefly lost Norman in the crowd. Uh, I think I was about 25 yards from getting to that inner circle of women who were taking bludgeons to the heads at that point. And then I saw Norman, not flinching, standing directly beside them. And he stayed right through it all. It's also Norman who, despite his extraordinary energy as a servant of the people, whether as a journalist, an activist, or now 
in, in his move to win this position and serve you in Congress. Somehow, he was already, always ready to go for a walk in the beautiful nature of this district too. He really lives it. He really knows it. And he really wants it to still be here for all of our children. Um, there, is, there is also a legacy that nor, you can help Norman embody, which is that great legacy of people like Paul Wellstone. <laughs> who come from that largely scrutinized, but historically credible place of social movement. That's the background. That's the background that has the stick to to bring forward all that Lynn Woolsey has, has given. <clears throat> and I'd always wanted to think that that was true and it wasn't always the insiders and, and, and that the vote that so often feels thrown away was that. And then finally we saw where we stand today, where many among our leadership in this country flinched when the Arab Spring rose. Because we'd been conditioned, hadn't we, to worry about what's Saudi Arabia going to think? But they told us that suddenly it was a new world where principle is strategy. And you are a district in particular that has represented that. I'm here to encourage you to continue to represent that with this extraordinary principled man, Norman Solomon. Thank you. Listening to the speakers uh, this evening and feeling the energy in the room, I was reminded of something that James Baldwin wrote many decades ago. He said, it's a common misperception that dreams do not change history. But in fact, when dreams are hitched to our actions, that's all that ever changes history for the better. Everything that we have to be proud of in our country is because people in rooms like this dared not only to imagine but to work together, to hitch the dreams to the hard work, yes, the strategy and the tactics, and yes, sometimes the tedium. And by doing that, they've left us what we can take pride in and hopefully enhance for the generations to come. Now, there's so many memories I'd like to share with you, and in the interest of time, I'm going to select a few only. It was um, close to nine years ago when Sean and I were in a plane circling Baghdad. And you may remember that in December of 2002, the war drums were beating very loudly. And the prophetic minority in Congress, with no one more important or more significant than Lynn Wolsey, continued to try to open the door to reconciliation rather than slaughter. And it's about 24 hours from SFO to Baghdad airport because there are a couple of transfers of train, uh, planes and so forth. And it was dawn and we were tired and the plane was circling around the city of Baghdad. And there was a child in the next seat up and Sean turned to me and I'm gonna paraphrase here but not far off I think. He said, when I 
start to wonder about whether this trip makes sense. I see that child and it reminds me of what it's all about. And really, whether we're talking about children in the Middle East or in Sonoma County, isn't that what this is all about? The next generations and generations that we will never be fortunate enough to meet. That is about lives in the balance, even lives in the balance that we may not be fully able to grasp. We can, we can make history, and I'm asking you tonight to resolve to, in our own way, in District 2, which is to say Marin and Western and up northern Sonoma County, and now it includes Mendocino, Humboldt, Del Norte, and Trinity Counties, to help make history because that's how the social change is going to turn into a different reality than what is currently the trajectory for future generations. Well, I could go on all night and I won't about the crises that we face. Let's just start here. We've heard from this podium tonight the crisis, Schoenberger Park, the Dutra plant. How does this happen? It happens because big money so far, and we are going to turn this around, we're determined, but so far, big money can dominate. Last Sunday, the Press Democrat wrote that I'm one of two leading candidates for Congress in this district. And it's a big puzzlement to me that that other leading candidate has stayed neutral the entire time. An environmental candidate, it's almost an oxymoron, to stay neutral. And I sat at a public forum in Petaluma more than two years ago and heard the testimony, the heartbreaking testimony of what will waft through the damaging materials that will enter the lungs of children playing in Schoenberger Park. This should be obvious, but big money has a way of fogging what should be obvious. As Sean mentioned, we've been blessed now for 18 and a half years and by the time the end of her term comes in 2012, it will be two full decades. To the representation from Lynn Woolsey, willing and able to speak up and speak out, not according to conventional wisdom, but the wisdom about preserving and enhancing and safeguarding life against the ravages of what Dr. Martin Luther King called the madness of militarism. And I gotta tell you that whether it's about Schellenberger Park, whether it's about global warming that two and a half years ago we were told was a crisis that had to be dealt with now. And minute by minute and hour by hour and day by day and year by year, we have seen the issue of climate change move from the front burner to the side burner to the back burner in Washington. And that's totally unacceptable. You know, one of my uh, favorite bumper stickers uh, says, nature bats last. And it doesn't much matter what people in Santa Rosa or Sacramento or Washington, D.C. say about political efficacy and the right tactics. We're up to 390 parts per million. Carbon dioxide. This is an absolute travesty to set aside what must become front burner for this entire country in the world. And one of the problems with many elected officials, particularly as you get to Sacramento and Washington, and let me continue with the baseball analogy here, uh, is what was said about the first President Bush, that he was born on third base and thinks he hit a triple. A lot of times people in elective office, to the extent they get something good done, they think they did it. Well, it's possible because people organized and people did the hard day-to-day -day work to do the education, the outreach, yes, the tedious, going door-to-door, -door, the media work, all the social organizations that comprise progressive work in this county, in this state, around the country, and really around the world. I think about the 
last time when there was such tremendous economic suffering in this country and uncertainty and fear in the 1930s. President Roosevelt, newly elected, chose not to hold back and triangulate against the social movements of the time, the trade unions, the tenants' rights organizers, those who were struggling for a crust of bread and more. He welcomed and built coalitions with those social movements, and he denounced those he called the economic royalists. And in a speech in 1936 at Madison Square Garden, he said, they are unanimous in their hatred for me, and I welcome their hatred. Now, he didn't say, they hate me, and I want them to like me. Now, I was elected from the current 6th Congressional District, Marin and Sonoma County, as an Obama delegate to the 2008 Democratic National Convention. And like you, I was thrilled the night that Barack Obama became president-elect of the United States. And still, every morning when I wake up, I'm very, very pleased that it isn't President John McCain. That said, progressives have two overarching responsibilities, historically and in the present day, I believe. One is to fight the right, to fight the racism, the xenophobia, the bigotry, the blaming of those at the bottom of the economic ladder, blaming the victims. That is right-wing populism, and we reject it. And in that spirit, we categorically reject the kind of politics and viciousness and appeal to fear and racism that was embodied in those flyers that were sent out against Pam Torliat. We reject that. We believe in a different kind of politics, not just marginally different, but fundamentally different. You might call it progressive populism. And that goes to the other role and responsibility of progressives, not just to fight the right, which is essential all the time, and the bigotry and that historic trend to blame victims by piling on them, but also we have a responsibility to move progressive policy into action, into law, into our society. We need to implement our principles, not just talk about them. And this constant triangulation, this moving halfway towards the wall of the right-wing Republican so-called leadership in Congress, and then moving again and splitting the difference again and again, it empowers the right wing, it doesn't blunt them, and it does not move progressive legislation into law. It fails on both counts, and we reject that approach. Paul Wellstone talked about the necessity to represent what he called the democratic wing of the Democratic Party. And by the way, Paul Wellstone never held elective office before he became United States Senator. And there's a myth out there that somehow the only way to legitimately go to the US Congress to represent a district is to climb the electoral ladder one rung at a time. Well, the fact is that the founding fathers and mothers saw that Congress needs a multiplicity of perspectives and experience. And frankly, there's a lot of experience of those who've climbed those rungs that I don't want, like taking big corporate money. I don't want it. And in fact, in this campaign, we refuse to take a single dollar of corporate PAC money. Oh, just as Paul Wellstone said he wanted to represent and fight for the Democratic wing of the Democratic Party, I want to fight for and strengthen the progressive wing of the Progressive Caucus in the United States House of Representatives. Uh, 75 members, it's the biggest caucus. It's the biggest caucus in the Congress. We can do a lot more. We've got to do a lot more, and we have that opportunity. Well, I've been lucky enough to participate in hearings and forums all over the North Bay for a couple of years as co-chair of the Commission on a Green New Deal for the North Bay. And when we look at that phrase, Green New Deal, I think it epitomizes the quest that we have. 
the green part. I've talked about global climate change. As we gather tonight, there is the continuation of necessary and courageous and essential civil disobedience in front of the White House to stop the tar sands project from Canada to Texas with a pipeline. And as we're here in solidarity today with those who want to protect Schoenberger Park, we're also here in solidarity with those who want to stop this ecologically insane project from going forward. And so that whole concept of local and global is really, I think, concentric and essential. Green New Deal also has the New Deal part. And social justice is absolutely essential to what we're about. It's not always popular. It's popular in retrospect, you know. Uh, Martin Luther King Jr., now he's a martyr on a postage stamp. Talk about I have a dream speech. Talk about how he was the apostle of nonviolence. But we hear very little about the fact that he was killed supporting the garbage workers in Memphis for their union rights. Now, I, as much as anyone, I think, I enjoy a good glass of wine. But there is no matter, and this region, of course, produces some fabulous glasses of wine. But there's not a glass of wine on this planet that can wash away the bitter taste of injustice in the fields. One of the first political activities I was engaged in after working to desegregate an apartment building in the mid-1960s as a junior high school student, um, I, a little bit later on, later in the 60s, and I imagine there are many people in the room who were similarly involved, we passed out boycott grapes flyers, right? In solidarity with the United Farm Workers. And in this state, there was a tremendous transformation of consciousness that's happened nationwide. And there was an ally named Jerry Brown, a very powerful person in the state. And most importantly, thousands and thousands of people who were farm workers and others worked and marched and organized and communicated and used nonviolence, sometimes going to jail, in support of the human rights of farm workers. That was essential in the 1960s, and it's essential today. The spirit of not only Cesar Chavez, but thousands and thousands of activists with UFW is with us today and always needs to be rekindled. And I got to say, as someone who also wakes up every morning, and I'm very glad that we don't have a governor, Meg Whitman, How appalled I was to see Governor Jerry Brown veto a bill that would have supported the union rights of the workers in the field. And that to me says a whole lot about our necessity to keep on pushing. Ultimately it's about policy. The governor having a D after his name does not in any way mean that we need to, one decibel, lower our voice on behalf of human rights. I have a bit more to say this evening, but at this moment, it's my pleasure, my very great pleasure, to introduce to you Casimiro Alvarez, the North Coast Director of the United Farm Workers. Thank you. Good afternoon. How you doing? Good, good. Uh, my name is Casimiro Alvarez, and thank you, Norman, for invite to this event. And definitely, we are working very hard with all the persons who is running for important positions. Uh, you are 
running today and from a long time ago. Then thank you for giving me the opportunity and share something that is happening with the United Farm Workers. ¿Se puede? Sí, se puede. Eh, let me share something very important of the farm workers' life. Here in Sonoma County, exceeds seven, seven, 6,000 farm workers who come to enrich this county in the grape industry. But here is the thing. The far workers is the people who need more protection, who need more basic, basic protection, including his, his families. For that reason, today the United Far Workers began a march from Madera City to Sacramento from 13 for the next 13 days. <clears throat> the proposal is to ask and present to Governor Jerry Brown with a legislation, the name is the Fair Treatment for the Far Workers. The Fair Treatment in the, for the Far Workers is not happening today. It's not happening this time. A lot of people is dying in the fields for the stress heat, for different uh, reasons. It's because they don't have right now the basic protection that the farm workers need. And this occasion and this important event today, I'd go light to request to each one of the person who are here in this room for September 13, we're going to be meeting with 5,000 people in the capital, in Sacramento. And then we're going to be pushing and giving pressure to governor to sign that important bill for the farm workers, for the families, because it's not only for the farm workers. It's we want justice. We want basic protection for the farm workers. And then, please, please join us for this. The march going to be arriving on Sacramento on September 4. From here, from Santa Rosa, we're going to have a 15 buses 15 buses that we're going to fill from different areas around Santa Rosa, Windsor, uh, Cl uh, uh, Cloverdale, uh, Hillsborough, Santa Rosa, Petaluma. And please join us for this September 4. And then if somebody is ready to ask me for one bus, I'm going to be here and tell me, please, Casimiro, I'm ready to fill it up one bus. And then I'm going to be here, uh, uh, you know, taking notes. And of course, we are supporting all the lives in those communities, all the life uh, of our families. And then we're going to be here again and, and again for September 13. We're going to wait for you guys. Thank you very much, and thank you for everybody, for everything what you are doing. Thank you. you